Hello and welcome to my quick start introduction to ZBrush. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the most basic features of ZBrush to get you used to the interface, as well as get sculpting right away. When you first start ZBrush, you will see a home screen. You can just close out of that. If you want to disable it, tap on the cog and select the option only show when updated. I actually have mine disabled, so it doesn't show up when I first start. The first thing you'll see when you open ZBrush is the light box. You can click on this button here or hit comma to open and close it. You'll want to go to the project settings and start with some kind of base mesh. So in this case, we're just going to go to Dynamesh Sphere to get started. When you open this, you can just hit no. All right, so the first thing we will start with is navigation. So if you click or press down on your tablet with your stylus, you can actually rotate. So you have to click off the model. If you click or press down on the tablet on the model, it'll start sculpting, which is fine because that's you know the point of ZBrush. But if you wanna rotate around your model, just click or tap down off of it. If you hold Alt while doing this, you will pan. So if you move your mouse or drag your stylus while doing that, it will pan. And then while doing this, while holding down Alt, if you release Alt, but keep left mouse down or keep the stylus on the tablet, you can zoom. So you can zoom, pan, and rotate with your stylus. The Alt Release method is really useful for sculpting. By default, your rotation settings will be enabled like this, so that when you're rotating, it's kind of crazy and a little hard to control. If you want it to be more stable and less insane, uh, you can click on Rotate on Y axis, so that when you're rotating, it doesn't flip around insanely on you. And another thing too, is if you ever like let's say you're sculpting this model and somehow you like lose the model, uh, you can hit F to focus. So it will focus on the model. And then of course you can use Alt click and then release Alt to zoom in. And you can also use this guy up here to rotate the faces. So let's say you're actually sculpting a face and you wanna like start sculpting some stuff in here. You can use this to look at the different sides of your model. So that's very useful. So let's say you want to scale or move your model. Uh, you can click on any of these. There's also shortcuts W for move, E for scale, R for rotate. The thing that's weird about these is if you hit any of these, it'll basically just open up the gizmo. So if you just want to do things on the gizmo, so like if you hit scale, you can still scale it or move it around or rotate it. So basically this inner box controls scaling these little inner boxes control scaling along an axis and then same thing with these like movement and rotation gizmos and then you can always hit Control z to undo there's also undo history up here by default zbrush will save undo history when you save your project if you don't want undo history you can uh, like disable it here undo history makes your file sizes huge but if you want to keep it you can it can be useful to keep it for edits, like if you made some changes you're not sure about. Alternatively, you could just save different versions of the model. That'd be the easiest way to do it. Uh, but you can save undo history and it is accessed up here. And you can like step through the undo history. So there is a nightmare scenario that can happen if you accidentally uncheck edit. So if you do this, if it, if it warns you, just say do not switch. But if you accidentally uncheck edit, you're gonna get one of these. And this is, you can't do anything here. It's like kind of messed up. Uh, so what you do is you hit T, which gets you back into edit mode. And then you hit Control N. And then you can hit F to focus. So this will get you out of that nightmare situation where you're just drawing your model over and over again. It clears the canvas and it puts you back in edit mode. So I remember that happened to me a few times when starting out and it was hilarious and I had no idea what was going on. but. You just hit T to go back into edit mode and control N to clear the canvas and you'll be fine. So let's talk about the actual sculpting. So by default, you should have the standard brush selected. A shortcut for standard brush is B S T. If you just type that combination in, it'll just take you to the standard brush by default. Uh, alternatively, there is B C B. This is for clay buildup. You can also just click on this over here and then just click on clay buildup or just click on 
standard, which should be in here somewhere. There it is. Uh, so there's all these different brushes. Now this might be overwhelming at first, but you really only need to use a few of these. So if you just write down and memorize BST for standard, BCB for clay buildup, and then BDS for dam standard, uh, which is just short for Damien standard, uh, this brush kind of cuts into a shape. So it's nice for kind of cutting in. You can also hit the Alt key to basically invert whatever effect the brush has on the model. So if this brush cuts in, if I hold Alt, it will kind of pop out. And also if I go to the clay buildup, when you sculpt with it by default, it increases volume. But then if I hold Alt, it will decrease volume or push in the model. So you can see here, I'm using the tap and hold to rotate off the model and then I'm holding an alt to sculpt into the model. Another brush that's very useful to know is the flatten brush, which is B F A. So flatten is really nice for just like refining rough areas. Now this model is still very low resolution, which is fine for when you're blocking something out. But when you actually want to add detail, there are ways to increase the detail of the model. So like right now, if I tap on this line fill, it'll show you the polygons. And you can see that it's very low res. Uh, it's only 2K points, which in ZBrush, you can get up to like a few million. Uh, you usually shouldn't jump into a few million right away. You should start out kind of low for like shaping things. So kind of in like the 10 to 20K range, while you're shaping things. And then when you're actually adding in mid-level details and then high-level details, that's when you should care about increasing the resolution. We'll, we'll fix this in the next video where we're actually gonna get into more sculpting stuff. So yeah, thanks for checking this out. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.